Hello, welcome. This is bringing together a complete unified BI platform with Looker and Data Studio. Just a quick note before we get started. We made the announcement a little earlier that Data Studio is now called Looker Studio. We're excited to be joining the Looker family and I'll be using the new brand throughout the rest of this presentation. My name is Andrew Becker. I'm a product manager on Looker Studio and I'm very happy to be here today to share a bit of what we've been working on. Our agenda for today. First, I'll take us through some background on Looker and Looker Studio, and then we'll get into the juicy details on what's new for these products. I'll do a quick demo and then wrap up with some hints at what's next. Let's get started. When the Data Studio team joined with Looker, we did a lot of research to figure out the strategy for these two products going forward. We know a lot of passionate customers were reaching out to ask, what would happen to Data Studio? We were asking the same questions. When all was said and done, we realized that one customer had summed it up the best for us. Dan Klein, senior analyst from Wayfair said, if I'm allowed to ask for the moon here, I love the backend capability of Looker. I would love to be able to set that up in Looker and then be able to build off that in Data Studio. So thanks, Dan. That's what we ended up building. Our research led us to the conclusion that self-serve BI, like Looker Studio, and governed or centralized BI, like Looker, both play important but different roles. And having both working together helps enterprises to make better data-driven decisions. Business users love self-serve BI. They want freedom. They wanna work with all the data they have and they don't wanna wait for a central team. On the other hand, data leaders love Govern BI. They care about a single source of truth for their organization. They don't want coworkers asking, who made this report to know what data can be trusted. They're also on the hook for security. So you could say that in the BI world, speed and convenience compete with trust and security. Enter the Looker connector for Looker Studio. We announced the private preview back in April. Today, we're excited to announce that we are entering public preview. This is an early step towards bringing together both sides of BI, and we'll get to the details in a minute. On a side note, I know a lot of customers wanna know, so I'll mention it here. Looker Studio remains available at no charge. So let's talk about the benefits a bit more concretely. If you're a Looker customer, empowering your teams by connecting Looker Studio can help you to self-serve, help your business users to access data on their own through our 600 plus data connectors, tell a story, build beautiful data experiences with a flexible drag and drop canvas interface, and mash it up. Blend data from Looker with data from other sources like Google Sheets, ads, or select databases. On the flip side, if you've been using Looker Studio, adding Looker to your stack can help you to model, make calculations and business logic consistent with a central model to help promote a single source of truth for your organization. Manage, develop and manage models through Git-based developer workflows and embed leverage APIs to build applications and integrate within products. Lots of benefits on both sides. Wrapping up the background, I wanna reiterate a few key points from the April announcement. The connector is built on the Looker API. Looker Studio talks to Looker and Looker talks to the data warehouse. Users present their own Looker credentials when creating or accessing a Looker data source in Looker Studio the same as if they were accessing Looker on the web. Changes made to the data source in Looker Studio do not propagate back to Looker. You can't break the model by playing around with Looker Studio. We'd like to have a pathway for model promotion in the future. Okay, on to the new stuff. So to start with, 
The public preview is compatible with Google Cloud hosted Looker instances only. We're looking into support for other hosting types. The Looker instances also need to be up to date. This is a public preview by allow list. To gain access, customers need to submit an enrollment form. We'll make it available after this presentation. Once we verify your enrollment, we'll add a toggle in labs on your Looker instance, and an admin from your team will need to flip it out. We'll also allow list your company domain in Looker Studio, so the connector will show up for all of your users. We're also rolling out two changes to Looker Studio to better represent the Looker model. We're expanding our limited support for field hierarchies to help keep things organized with those big Looker explorers. So you'll be able to see your fields organized in the usual ways with views, group labels, and dimension groups. Additionally, while the data source object in Looker Studio has always had a concept of field descriptions, we're surfacing those descriptions in more places in the UI for easier access. On the commercial side, we have a couple small announcements. The connector itself is currently available at no charge, and Looker API usage from Looker Studio won't count towards Looker tier limits. We expect to have more to share on the commercial front as we approach general availability. In terms of governance, we've disabled owner's credentials for Looker data sources in Looker Studio, so each and every viewer needs to supply their own credentials. If you're not familiar with owner's credentials, it's a form of pass-through authentication, and that's not very compatible with the concept of Looker. So even if you open a Looker Studio report that someone shared, you'll be prompted to authenticate. We're also currently disabling data download and email scheduling for these data sources in Looker Studio. We're planning to integrate with these permissions in Looker in the near future. To keep things fresh, refreshing the cache in Looker Studio can now request fresh data not just whatever was already cached in Looker. A few last changes. We're baking Google account linking into the experience for account management. Google account linking allows users to link Looker instances to their Google accounts and make it easy to manage those linked accounts. We're adding an open in Looker Studio menu option to Looker Explorers. Selecting this option launches Looker Studio with a blank report and a Looker data source configured to the current Explorer. This is built on the Looker Studio integration API. We hope this simplifies the experience of using Looker and Looker Studio together. Lastly, we've made some changes to help prevent bad reaggregation outcomes when using Looker Studio together with Looker. More to come on this soon. Now let's get into a little demo and show you what we're working with here. So if you're a user of Looker Studio, this screen should look pretty familiar to you. Uh, we're here creating a new data source, and this screen shows all of our connectors. So we have uh, 28 Google connectors and uh, over 600 partner connectors. Shout out to our partners for building all those great connectors. We're gonna go ahead and select the Looker connector, connect to your Looker semantic models. So here you'll see where we can drop in a URL for a Looker instance. Uh, this would be like the same URL that you use uh, when you're accessing Looker on the web. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop one in here. You'll also see there's some saved Looker instances. This is that Google account linking I was talking about earlier. Uh, you can go, go into Google My Account to unlink these. I'm gonna hit connect to Looker account, and you'll see that uh, an authentication pop-up comes up here. I'm gonna go ahead and authenticate into this Looker instance. If this was your first time, you might also see uh, Google consent screens uh, asking for you to, to click your way through those. Here you can see uh, we've brought in the models from this instance as well as their explorers. Um, if you're not quite sure where to find your explorer, you can also search here to find it. So I'm gonna uh, build a Looker data source connecting to this orders explorer in model the look. Let's go ahead and click connect. And this can take a minute sometimes. All right, so here you can see we've established this data source. We've brought in all of the dimensions from this Looker explorer um, as well as the metrics 
also known as measures in, on the looker side. You can note here that uh, we're, we're limiting this data source to viewers' credentials only. Uh, as we mentioned before, owners' credentials are disabled for looker, uh, looker data sources. You can also come in here and change the uh, frequency of the data refresh from every 15 minutes to every 12 hours, defaulting to every 12 hours. A couple more things to note here. Um, we're not currently bringing through uh, filters or parameters from Looker into Looker Studio. The descriptions should pipe through if you have descriptions for these fields in your Explorer. Um, they should come through right here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a report. Okay, and so that can take a minute. Uh, here we've got a report based on that data source. I'm gonna cheat a little bit here, and uh, we're gonna take a look at a pre-built report on a data source for the same Looker Explorer. Uh, it's pretty boring to watch me build out the entire report, but this is a really cool, really nice looking uh, report if I do say so myself. So um, from here you can see we've got uh, three different uh, chart elements. Um, we've got uh, order status uh, as a table. We've got a heat map, uh, hot spot chart here with orders by, by city, and we have orders over time. And you can see that I've actually cross-filtered. So um, if I go ahead and clear that, we'll go back to seeing all of these different elements reflecting the complete data set, uh, whereas a minute ago we were looking at only the pending orders. Um, so here you go, now you can see that uh, we've, we've removed the cross filter. So uh, from here it's just kind of the uh, data studio experience that uh, you all know and love. Uh, now we're calling it Looker Studio. All right, wrapping things up, let me tease a little bit of what's to come. We're continuing work on representing the Looker model in Looker Studio. So along the lines of the field description and field hierarchy changes announced earlier, we have more in progress. We also know Looker admins want to have insight into activity coming from Looker Studio, similar to the way they might use system activity in Looker today. We're working on this now. Lastly, the challenge of expanding the circle of trust from Looker to Looker Studio poses some interesting questions and we'll be looking for customers to help us plan the best way forward. You've heard a lot today about the future for BI at Google, with Looker and Looker Studio coming together. The connector is in public preview now, and we're making strides towards connecting Looker Studio to Looker in multiple ways, representing the Looker model in Looker Studio, and expanding the circle of trust into Looker Studio. We're excited about this new direction and can't wait for you to see what's in store for the future. Thank you.